Does it seem like no matter how often you wash your clothes, they still aren't clean? Well, your washing machine and dryer may actually be to blame. And yeah, I know that sounds a little bit strange that the things cleaning your laundry may actually be making them dirtier, but this can definitely be the case. And if you don't properly maintain your washer and dryer, it can cause you some really big headaches. So in this video, we're gonna do a deep dive into the best ways to maintain and clean your washer and dryer so that you can finally say goodbye to all of your pesky laundry issues. Oh, and I'll also have a bonus tip that will save you time and effort the next time you do laundry, so you need to be sure to save to the end to get that. Now, the biggest tip I can give you is to tackle something that we never knew existed on our washing machine. This one thing was causing all of our clothes to have a sour smell after they dried. Now, that smell is really hard to describe, but I think you probably know what I'm talking about. It's that funky odor that you can sometimes have after letting wet clothes sit in a washing machine for too long. But in our case, we would still have that smell even if we immediately removed the clothes from the washer to the dryer. So we were really confused by that. Well, it turns out that if you have a front load washing machine, there's a drain pump filter that needs to be cleaned out regularly. We had no idea that this was even there and slowly over time, it became a bigger and bigger problem for our clothes. In fact, we heard about this and the first thing that happened was my wife and I looked at each other and said, ours doesn't have that, does it? And obviously, of course it does. We just had no idea. Now to clean out the drain pump filter and disinfect it, here's what we did. First, we got a cheap plastic container and a bunch of towels and rags so that way we could catch any water that would run out of the drain filter. Once we opened the door and started unscrewing the filter, the water started coming out. And so we were able to catch most of this in the container, although it was at a really awkward angle, which is where the towels and the rags came in really handy. Now, when we opened it up, there were two surprising things that happened. First was the amount of water that came out. So make sure you're prepared for that. And then the other thing was the smell. It was bad. I mean, really, really bad. And at the time, our washing machine was only a couple of years old. It was no wonder our clothes weren't smelling fresh if that water was mixing with fresh water in each load. After the water drained out, we cleaned out the filter by removing all the big debris and particles, then rinsed the filter under warm water to get the rest. To disinfect the filter, we soaked it in a solution of one part white vinegar and one part water for about 15 to 20 minutes. This helped kill any leftover bacteria or mold that was on the filter itself. Now, while the filter was soaking, we used some old towels to wipe the inside of the drain pump cavity, and we also used some wooden skewers to help scrape off some of the buildup in the corners that was hard to reach with just a towel. To disinfect the drain pump cavity, you can either dip a cloth or a sponge in the vinegar solution and wipe the inside of the drain pump thoroughly, or you can use a spray bottle to really get in there and disinfect it. Once it sits for a few minutes, wipe it out with another towel and allow it to air dry for a few minutes. Once that's all done, you can put everything back in place. Now I recommend doing this at least every two to three months to make sure it's clean and disinfected regularly. That'll help keep all those really, really odd odors at bay. And as for other maintenance, you'll also want to clean the detergent drawer every couple of weeks or monthly to prevent buildup and mold in that as well. For front loading washers, it's also a good idea to wipe down the door and the rubber seal to remove any debris and soap residue, and also to keep it dry so mildew doesn't develop. It's also a good idea to keep the door open slightly at all times to allow it to dry out completely and prevent any mold and mildew from growing in that as well. I've seen this time and time again on front load machines. It causes a lot of issues and it can be prevented by simply keeping the door propped open just a little bit in order to help get that airflow going. And if you have a top loading washing machine, the fabric softener dispenser and the agitator should be cleaned every month or so as well to help clear out any residue. To give your washer a deep clean, run an empty cycle with a mix of vinegar and baking soda, or you can use a specialty cleaner like this one here. This will help eliminate any leftover odors and will keep your machine working efficiently. Once or twice a year, you should inspect the hoses to make sure they aren't leaking or damaged. If they're leaking slowly, tighten the connections, and if the hoses are damaged, replace them. I recommend using stainless steel hoses instead of rubber because they're more durable and they will last longer. Also, if you have hard water, consider installing a water softener or a whole house water filter with a sediment remover that will help reduce mineral buildup and extend the life of your washing machine and make your washer more efficient. Now let's switch gears and talk about the dryer. So the biggest issue or concern you have to focus on with the dryer is lint buildup. It's the enemy of every laundry room for two reasons. 
One, lint buildup can make your dryer more inefficient, causing it to use more energy than it needs to in order to dry your clothes. That can lead to wet clothes too if your dryer is older and doesn't have a moisture sensor or if your moisture sensor is bad because the amount of time needed to fully dry your clothes will have to increase in order to get the job done. Now, if you don't adjust for that amount of time that's needed to dry your clothes completely, you can have wet clothes sitting in your dryer and wet clothes sitting in a dryer can cause, you guessed it, funky odors. Now, the second issue is that lint buildup is actually a fire hazard. Now, it can become a fire hazard because it's a highly flammable material. When lint accumulates in the dryer or its venting system, it can restrict airflow and cause a dryer to overheat. If the temperature gets high enough, the lint can ignite and start a fire. And dryer fires are probably more common than you might think. According to the U.S. Fire Administration, approximately 2,900 home closed dryer fires are reported each year, and of those, failure to clean the dryer is the leading cause of those fires, accounting for about a third of them. To properly maintain your dryer, you should make it a habit to empty the lint trap after every drying cycle. You should also inspect and clean out the dryer vent and the hose because these places can accumulate lint as well. Now, ideally, you should do this every three months or so, but even if you happen to clean it every fall and spring, that's going to go a long way to preventing fires and making your dryer way more efficient. In addition to lint, you should remove any debris that you might find in the hose and make sure it's not kinked, crushed, or damaged when you're putting the hose back in place. You can also get a dryer vent cleaning kit to help brush away caked on lint that can build up over time. Now these are generally reasonably priced and they can be used over and over again so they're a really good investment. Now if you notice your clothes are taking longer to dry than they used to, it could also be a sign that there's an issue with the dryer moisture sensor. So it's important to take care of this sensor as part of your regular maintenance as well. You can clean it with a cotton swab and rubbing alcohol every few months to maintain accurate drying times and prevent over drying and overheating. Now these sensors are typically located inside the dryer drum, either close to the lint filter, or they can sometimes be located on the backside wall of the drum itself. Uh, if it's not in those locations, they can also be placed uh, around the door, inside the door frame, if you can't find it in either of those locations. And what you're looking for is usually a set of metal bars or strips that come in contact with the clothes as they tumble. Now this contact allows the sensor to detect the moisture level in the fabric and adjust drying times as necessary. It's also a good idea to double check and make sure your dryer vent is made of a non-combustible material like rigid or flexible aluminum duct like what you see behind me. Um, you also need to make sure that it's properly installed as well. Now sometimes these vents and hoses are made out of a vinyl or a, a really thin plastic material and if that's the case, I highly recommend upgrading to either um, the aluminum foil uh, hose that you see behind me or even a solid uh, metal ductwork to hook up your dryer to the wall. Be sure not to overload the dryer too because stuffing it full of clothes can cause it to work harder than it should, which can generate more heat and more heat can increase the risk of fire. Now, if you've done all of these things and it seems like your clothes are still wetter than they should be, your moisture sensor may actually be bad. Now to test this, let's go through a series of steps that will help you troubleshoot and identify if in fact your moisture sensor needs to be replaced or simply just cleaned. To test the moisture sensor, you can run a simple test using a multimeter. Set the multimeter to the lowest ohm setting, which is the resistance setting, and touch the multimeter probes to the sensor terminals. Make sure to place one probe on each of the metal bars and not both probes on one of the bars. If you place both probes on one bar, you're going to get an incorrect reading. The multimeter should display a reading indicating some resistance. Next, dampen a cloth or a paper towel and touch it to the sensor bars. The resistance number should change on the multimeter, indicating that the sensor is detecting moisture. If there's no change or the initial reading shows no resistance, the sensor may be faulty and need to be replaced. And as promised, here's our bonus for watching this video. We put together a free stain removal reference sheet that will save you time and your clothes. So this handy guide covers various stain and fabric types, uh, safe treatment methods, and it will help you ensure that your clothes always look their best and get back to normal. To get it, I put a link in the video description where you can go and download it at no cost, and you won't even have to put in your email address to get it. Just click on the link in the video description below to go pick up your copy of this handy guide that you can leave in your laundry room. All right, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful, and if you did, I'd appreciate you hitting that like button and even sharing it with someone else that might find it helpful as well. Also, if you're interested in more videos like this one here, I'll have one or two that will pop up here that you can go and watch. Otherwise, I want to say thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.